What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. We have to find the x-intercepts of these two functions here. So we've got f of x equals negative two times x plus three to the power of four plus 32. And then f of x equals negative three times x minus four to the power of three minus 24. So before we get into the algebra of this, notice that the parent function here is x to the four. Notice parent function over here is x to the three. Now, x to the 4, we know that it looks like x squared, very similar, like that. And so, depending on the transformations, there's basically going to be um, one of three cases for the x-intercepts. We can get a case where there's no x-intercepts, so if it looks like that, for example. We can get the case of one x-intercept, so even over here, or if we shift it, left or right, and it stays, the vertex stays on the uh, x-axis, or we can get two x-intercepts, so something like this or something like that, right? So there's three cases for the x-intercepts for this parent function and any transformations for it, versus x to the three, there's always only one case, right? So it's always the parent function, this function, it looks like this, so no matter how we transform this, flip it, shift it left or right, shift it up or down, there's always going to be one x-intercept, right? Because it has opposite behavior. So it's going to cross that x-axis one time, always only one time. It can't cross it twice, right? So there's always going to be, for x to the 3, no matter how it's transformed, there's always going to be one x-intercept versus here, x to the 4, it could be one of three cases. So... The way we find out the actual x-intercepts, we plug in zero for y, and then we solve for x. So the way we would do that, bring the 32 over, it'd be negative 32, we got negative two, x plus three to the power of four. Divide both sides by negative two to get rid of this negative two in front. So we'd have 16 equals x plus three to the power of four. And then what we do, to get rid of this 4, we could take both sides to the power of 1 over 4, to the power of the reciprocal. 4 times 1 over 4 is just 1, so we'd have x plus 3 to the power of 1, which is just x plus 3. And then 16 to the power of 1 over 4 is like the fourth root of 16, which is plus or minus 2. So remember, any even root, whether it's a square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, it's always going to be a plus or minus here unless it's a negative number here, then it's gonna be undefined, or unless it's zero, then this is just gonna be zero. If this ends up being zero, then it's that case of where there's only there's gonna be only uh, one x-intercept. If it ends up being negative, then there's no x-intercept. There's not gonna be anything to solve. So you can only take the fourth root of zero or a positive number, and if you take it, if you take the fourth root of a positive number or an even root of a positive number, it's always gonna give you plus or minus, a plus or minus value. And so in this case, there's going to be two cases, 2 equals x plus 3, or uh, negative 2 equals x plus 3. So bring the 3 over, x would be negative 1, that's one of the x-intercepts, bring the 3 over, negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. That would be the other x-intercept. Right, so this function here has two x-intercepts, negative 5 and negative one, the corresponding y values for both of those x values is zero. So two x-intercepts for that function, and then over here, we know there's gonna be one x-intercept, so it's just a matter of finding it, same thing, plug in zero for y. Bring the negative 24 over, that would be positive 24. Divide both sides by three, negative eight. Take both sides to the power of 1 over 3, or third root both sides. And this would end up being 3 times 1 over 3 is 1. x minus 4 to the power of 1 is just x minus 4. And then the third root, an odd root, whether a third root, fifth root, seventh root, you could take it of a negative value, a positive value, or a 0. It's always going to give you one answer, not 2, like over here. So the third root of negative 8 is negative 2. And that's why there's always only one x-intercept because an odd root or the third root, since we're dealing with x to the power of three, it's always gonna give you one value here all the time. 
And so now isolating for the x, bring the negative 4 over, negative 2 plus 4 gives us positive 2. So that ends up being the x-intercept for that function. Right, so that's how the algebra works for a transform x to the 4 function and a transform x to the 3 function.